Let's do Little Ryzen. Hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. Today we're going to be delitting the Ryzen 3950X. And with that, we're going to be doing some temperature testing to see if it's even worth it. I'm doing this before I do the gaming benchmarks because I want to give the um, 3950X the best chance that it has to compete against the 10900K. So first we're going to do the temperature testing... Uh, stock with just some cryonite on top and then we'll delit it liquid metal it and then we'll do some temperature testing with liquid metal on the dyes and on the IHS so the heat transfer should be in theory should be phenomenal um, the test set up today we got a 360 mil radiator and a 120 mil radiator so 480 total millimeter radiator inside the case um same bits power water block that i always use for my all my amd testing uh we're going to be doing two types of testing today we're going to be doing um burst heat transfer and long-term heat transfer over 30 minutes so when it comes to the burst transfer heat, uh, heat transfer uh, we're going to let the uh, radiator and all the water cool down to room temperature. And then you hit small FFT on, um, on Prime 95. And you just want to see what temperature it spikes up to in the first couple of seconds to see what the max is. And that's how you can tell the, what the burst heat transfer is of the material that you're using. That's how you want to test how good the solder is and how good the liquid metal is. The second thing that we're going to test is the long-term, over 30 minutes, total heat temperature um, cooling performance, I want to say. That's not going to have as much of an effect on the total cooling capacity of the system because once the water reaches a certain um, like temperature saturation point... Liquid metal doesn't help that anymore. I mean, the, the the temperature of the water is the temperature of the water, right? I assume, anyway. We're going to test that and find out. But hopefully we can get some good gains here so that when we do the gaming benchmarks, I can overclock the crap out of the 3950X and try and get as much FPS as possible to finally prove whether or not AMD can even compete with Intel at all. Alright, so first things first, I'm going to throw this thing in, we're going to do some temperature testing with its stock, and then I will be back to delid the CPU, and I'll do that on camera, although I'm just going to do the same thing Der Bauer did anyway, but why not? Alright, first things first, I got the uh, stock temperature results done here, and we're about to delid the 3950X. And so first things first, we're just going to cut the glue off the sides here. Um, you got to get these little razor blades, slowly work your way in on each corner first. You don't want to jab into the PCB, you want to make sure it goes straight into the glue. Each corner. And then after each corner is done, you kind of just work your way into the sides and you want to cut all the way around and take as much time as you need to make sure that it's done well there's no rush here um, I'm gonna do the rest off camera and then I'll come back all right now that the cutting's done gonna grab our uh, delid tool here with the uh, AMD uh, adapter Gotta flip this around, and this one is a lot trickier than the Intel ones. You can't just reef on one side the whole way. You have to do like one millimeter back and forth at a time. There's a lot of SMDs in here that if you just push all the way, you'll break them all off and you're done. So, this one, oh, it's, it's really, really, really finicky. I would suggest having someone that's done it before with you, but... You just want to go one millimeter forward and then two millimeters back, one millimeter in. Flip sideways, one millimeter out, 
one, two millimeters in, one millimeter back, and you just keep flipping the CPU. So 180, 180, sideways, 180, and then sideways, 180, et cetera, et cetera. And you do that, you literally have to do that for like 30 minutes to an hour until the solder breaks off. Do not rush this. Just keep, even if it feels like it's coming off, but it's not, just keep doing it until it comes off with the tool. Do not pry it with a knife. Don't do any of that nonsense. Just straight. And I'm going to do that and I'll be back. I'm just going to do a little quick one here on camera. It's all in there. And it, I can't move it because it's, it's, it's against the, uh, the PCB now. So all I want to do is just... Just a little bit. That's it. I, I just, I, I literally just felt it move like a bit. I'm done. I'm flipping, I'm taking it out and I'm flipping it around now. And I'm going to do that for the next hour. All right. Oh my God. That took like three hours to get off. Holy shit. I just, just don't do this. It's not worth it. Just, just never ever delit a Ryzen chip. It's hundred percent not worth it. Um, yeah, that took about three hours of one millimeter back and forth constantly. But anyway, it's off now. Good. Whatever. Um, this is Quicksilver. You buy it from the rocket cool website. Um, this stuff eats away the, uh, stock, uh, solder. So you just put that on there. And you use just an, an old, you know, credit card and you just kind of scrub it in with the credit card. And then you kind of leave it for maybe 30 minutes uh, to an hour and you keep kind of scrubbing it. Not scrubbing, but you kind of want to, you want to disturb the solder a little bit, right? And then after about 30 to an hour, you can just scrape it off with the credit card. And it, that is a much safer method than using a razor blade. You won't you won't gum up your um, your silicon that way. So this is the way I do it. Um, I'm gonna come back in an hour after this is kind of. Oh yeah, it's already starting to like melt. You can kind of feel it getting sticky. Um, I'm gonna leave this for about an hour, and then I'll be back with this all cleaned up, and we'll see the results in a second. All right, it's been about an hour now, and. Like, you can't really tell on the camera, but it's pretty much scraping off with little to zero resistance at all. Like, this is this is the best way to, to de-lid or get rid of solder on a soldered CPU, hands down. I'm not, I'm not down with the whole razor blade thing. That's too sketchy for me. I'll just, I'll take my time and use Quicksilver. But like, yeah, this is, this is going to come off in two seconds here. I'm going to do this and then I'll be back. All right, I finished cleaning them up and I don't think I don't think AMD uses the same soldering process as Intel does. Like the two the two core dies look fine, but the IO die is like you can actually see that it's like flaking off. I'm not sure what that is. It's almost like the um the the protection layer of the die like kind of got sucked out with the solder or something. I've never seen that before. Um, I'm going to throw it all back together and try test it out. And then if the thermals end up sucking, I'll just do a quick lap over all three of them to make sure it's completely flat. But I, I'm, sh I'm sure it'll be okay. But yeah, that's pretty interesting how the, uh, the coating is kind of chipping away there. But um, also, I'm not sure if you can see it. Where is it? Right here right here this one right here i actually lost an smd capacitor in the d-lid that's fine um if you lose like 10 of them you might have a problem but if you lose one or two that's not gonna like they're just filtering capacitors for signal quality so they're i mean as long as you have a good power supply and a good motherboard you'll be fine i mean if, if you lose five of these things you might drop like 50 or 100 megahertz or something right i'm not really sure but I mean, good quality power supply, and if you if you lose one in the delid process, that's fine. But um, let me clean up all this glue and clean this whole thing up, and let's put her back together and do some testing. All right, we're done here. I scraped off all the glue on the sides, 
cleaned up with polish all the dyes and everything. And that's about it. We're, it's time for liquid metal. Let's get rolling. I'm pretty excited. Let's see what this thing can do. Okay, so what I ended up doing here was I used the uh, D-Lid Die Mate clamping tool with a credit card. Like I, I put the credit card here so the pins don't get bent. And then I put this over top and clamped it down. And then I glue gunned all the way around. And the reason I did that was the glue gun is soft enough to peel without damaging anything. But also hard enough to keep the IHS in one place when you're putting your cooler on. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's my, it doesn't have to look, doesn't have to look pretty, but I mean, if it works, it works, right? No one's going to see it underneath the CPU cooler anyway. So that was my solution. Um, I'm going to clean this up and throw it in the computer and let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Liquid metal over the entire IHS. That's actually like an expensive amount of liquid metal. This this looks absolutely ridiculous. Look at this. This is hilarious. Oh my god. I hope it performs well cuz this is a this is a gong show. All right. I'm going to put the 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 CPU cooler is nickel plated as well, so the liquid metal is going to work really good here. All right. I'll be back. All right. I got the results here. Let me just bring this up. They were awesome. I am not totally not worth it, but still awesome results nonetheless. Um, so stock, stock with cryonaut, um, like the stock uh, soldered Tim. Um, we had a burst temperature of seventy five Celsius. That's just like a small FFT prime ninety five from from totally cold water burst temperature seventy five Celsius. And after 30 minutes of Prime 95 small, uh, peak temperature leveled out at 85 Celsius. All right, now with the D-Lid and liquid metal on both sides of it. Uh, okay, cold, totally cold water. Burst temperature was 64 so that is a 11 degree drop. That is, that's crazy. So the, uh, the transfer of heat from the dye to the cooler increased by 11 degrees Celsius. Um, uh, that's, that is significant. And I also noticed that, um, uh, when it's stock and it bursted, it bursted to about 40, 25, 40, 50 on the initial burst. And with the liquid metal and D lid, it bursted to 4150, 4125. So initial burst on the uh, PBO got about 75 to 100 megahertz just from the liquid metal and D lid by itself. No other changes. Um, after 30 minutes of small FFT prime, uh, the temperature leveled out at 75, which was really interesting because I didn't think that the the temperature would lower 10, 10, like, so it was improved by 10 degrees over the stock one. But, um, yeah. And I even left it for an extra 10 minutes after, and it didn't go above 75. Like the, the water temperature was at capacity and it was staying at 75. And I also noticed that the room got way warmer with, um, with the liquid metal in the 75 degrees. But that also probably because I left it on for an extra 10 minutes. But still, like, the room got pretty damn hot. And once the temperature leveled out, they were both stable at about 40, 50. So after 30, 40 minutes of Prime 95, it wasn't, even though it was 10 degrees Celsius lower, it wasn't boosting any higher at, in stock form. Um, so... It, it it doesn't it's not really worth it in that regard if you're going to be rendering all day long it doesn't really change the actual boost but if you're playing games or something there is an extra 100 megahertz there to to boost out of it right um i'm going to have to do some overclocking on this to see if it actually netted anything but yeah interesting little tidbit there you might get an extra 75 to 100 megahertz initial uh pbo boost right 
So if you want to see some uh, gaming benchmarks on this thing, make sure to subscribe. So all in all, I say very successful project today. Uh, I'm going to leave it like that, just glued and... That's going to be my new rendering rig now. Um, and then next step is to just overclock the piss out of it and see what we can get out of it. I am going to do that next and possibly do a future video with some benchmarks to see how far I can actually push this thing. Now that now that it doesn't go above 60 degrees in gaming loads, maybe, maybe we can boost the hell out of it. I mean, let's find out, right? I hope today is the day I earned your subscription. Uh, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, subscribe, hit the like button, do all that YouTube SEO goodness for me. Comment down below if you have any suggestions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, it all, it all helps push the algorithm up and, uh, it tells YouTube that I know what I'm doing. So I'll see you guys in the next video here. I'm not really sure what's on the schedule, but yeah, I hope to see you guys next time. Talk to you later.